Hi everyone, it's Miss Wong here. We're going to be going over the position versus time graph practice, practice number two. So we're going to look over graph number one. I know this practice worksheet had two graphs, but we're going to make it into two separate videos again, just in case. You never know how long it might take. So position versus time graph number one. The first question is, tell a point form story of the motion that occurs in each segment. You can write it out on the segment line on the actual graph or in these lines that were provided. So my story is going to be about a little ladybug. So a ladybug one meter north of me moves further north from me pauses moves south towards me and pauses again so if I the person right here right here at zero i'm saying this story because the ladybug is one meter north from me and moves further north from me so he's moving more north from me and then decides to pause as in stays in the same location away from me for a certain time period and then they decide to move south, so towards me again, towards that x-axis, towards me. And then they decide to pause again. They're still at the same location somewhere on the graph during this time period. All right. I'm going to just erase some of this here so we can solve the questions. Number two, identify all the times when the object is stopped moving toward the motion detector. So the motion detector is me moving away from the motion detector. So the parts that it has stopped, we're going to label the graph first or the phases, segments, and sections of the graph. So we're going to say this is A, B, C, D, and E. I labeled all of those parts because they're all different motions that are happening during this graph. And the motions that have stopped or hasn't moved will be the motions that are those straight, flat, horizontal lines that or with time we see are at the same location even with the increase of time. So that would be points A, C, and E. Moving toward the motion detector, that is saying which lines are moving towards the x-axis. And we notice that D is, okay? It's a straight diagonal line that's flat, straight. That means that it's constant velocity. So again, we're working with a position versus time graph, okay? Therefore, the slope will equal velocity. Okay, so that line D is moving towards the x-axis or to the motion detector, which is me. So D, and which line's moving away from the motion detector? Well, the only line that's moving away, which we haven't uh, put into the answer, is B. B is going away from the motion detector or away from the x-axis, and this means those values are going to be more positive, okay? That velocity will be positive. So let's erase some of these arrows and answer the question now. Oops, B and C, B and D. All right, so this was B. Calculate the value of the velocity between one second and three seconds. So velocity is that slope calculation. Equal rise over run which is y-axis values divided by x-axis values will give us that velocity. So velocity, I'm putting an arrow on top to show that it is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction, which equals a change in our y 
uh, which was our distances or displacements, so a change in displacement since it's velocity, and our x coordinates were time, so a change in time. So between one second and three seconds, let's look at those values because we need df minus di over tf minus ti. All right, so at one second, we're about here. One second is half right here, and at three seconds. So that means we're solving the slope for b. Okay, the slope for b, and we're choosing points that are right here and here. So that means we have one meter and 2.5 meters. And 2.5 is our uh, final displacement, and one meter was our initial displacement. Our final time was three seconds, and our initial time was one second. So let's plug those values into the chart, uh, into our formula here. So we're going to plug in 2.5 meters, practice writing in those uh, units, 1 meter, divided by 3 seconds, take away 1 second, you get 1.5 meters, divided by 2 seconds, and it'll give you a slope or a velocity of 0 0.75 meters divided by seconds, meters per second, and that is your answer for velocity. So that slope gives us a velocity of 0 0.57 meters per second. Awesome. Let's answer the next question. Four, calculate the value of velocity between three seconds and six seconds. So three seconds right here to six seconds right here. So we're going to use these points. This one will be our final values, and this point here will be our initial values. So let's plug those values in there. V equals that change in D over change in time. DF minus DI over TF minus TI equals our DF, we notice was 2.5. Our DI was also 2.5. And then our TF was six, and our TI was three. Alrighty, so let's plug that in. 2.5 meters minus 2.5 meters over a time of 6 seconds minus 3 seconds. You get 0 up there for meters. Divided by time, 6 take away 3, 3 seconds. Well, 0 divided by 3, 0 divided by anything, you get 0. However, meters divided by seconds, you get meters per second. So your velocity is 0 meters per second, which is something we predicted because the flat line, you're not changing speed, you're not moving at all, so you're still, you're paused. So your velocity should be a zero velocity, which we just calculated to be true. Because over time, you see that you're staying at this position of 2.5. Let's answer our next question. Calculate the value of velocity between 6 seconds and 7.5 seconds. All right, 6 seconds to 7.5 is about here. So if we look at this uh, diagonal line, it is a straight, flat diagonal line. So if we take any of these points, we're going to get and calculate a velocity value to be the same at any of these points that we plug into the formula. So let's plug into... 7.5, which is, oh, 7.5 is about here, sorry. It's at the end of the slope. So that makes it even easier for us. So 7.5 is about here, 7.5 seconds. And this value here, I will approximate to be 1.75. Very good. And we're gonna use this value with this as our, uh, df and tf and then this value here we're going to use as our di and uh, ti so let's enter those values into our formula okay so we're going to put v equals change in d over change in t df minus di over tf ti equals 
minus 2.5. These are all in meters. Practice putting those. 7.5 seconds minus 6 seconds. You get negative 0 0.75 meters over 1.5 seconds. And it gives you a final answer of 0 0.5 meters per second. But it is negative. Okay, everybody? It is negative. And let's see if we are correct. Calculate that velocity. Well, if we look here, D is going towards the x-axis or towards that motion detector. So we should get a negative value for velocity. So that makes sense why we got a negative. Now let's compare the numbers. Well, if you look at the slope with B here, it's much more steeper than the slope here of D. So that D value should be less than the B value and our calculated slope for B, B for Bob was 0 0.75 and then our calculated slope for D was 0 0.5 which is less than 0 0.75 so we're on the right track that's just how you would double check your answer so let's calculate the value of average velocity between 1 and 8 seconds 1 and 8 seconds so they want everything from they they basically want you to average the whole thing so i'm just going to erase it so we can see this a lot i don't know what happened how do you get rid of that line there well i don't know how i did that with the line so my apologies there whoa not too sure what's going on okay so we want the Average velocity between these points here, oops, these points here, 8 and 1. So we're going to pick our definite values for DF and DI. And then, so this one is DF, this is DI, this is TF, and this is TI. And plug those into our formula. The huge line is gone. That's good. Okay, so calculate that value for velocity. And you get, so we're gonna plug in all those values, 1.75 meters minus 1.0 meters over eight seconds minus one second, which is 0 0.75 divided by seven seconds. And you get 0 0.11 meters per second. Awesome. So let's double check if that makes sense. We get a positive 0 0.11 meters per second. Well, if we look at our graph and we average all these values, we should get a positive. Ooh, that's weird. We should get a positive because, look here, the B line is much larger. That positive uh, velocity is much larger than the D, okay? So therefore, when you average it, you should get a positive value because you're moving in the positive velocity direction much longer than the D. So that makes sense. Very good. And once you average that flat line, that horizontal flat line with these two slopes, you should get a value that should be less than both of them. So a 0 0.11 meters per second makes sense. Determine the total distance and the total displacement from zero seconds. So the total distance, we add up all the changes in um, uh, distance here, add up all our meters. So we're gonna go right here, we have a 0 0.5 difference, 0 0.5 difference again, meters, 0 0.5 meters, and another 0 0.5 meters. So that means all that is 1.5 meters. And then the only other time when we're not a flat horizontal line staying at the same position was D here. And it is around 0 0.5 plus another, 0 0.25 25 and 0 0.5 meters because it is half of 0 0.5 and therefore this equals 0 0.75 so our distance equals 1.5 meters plus 0 0.75 meters 
which gives us a total of D equals 2.25 meters. Okay, so D equals 2.25 meters. Now let's solve for displacement. We're putting an arrow on top because displacement is a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. So let's go from zero seconds to 10 seconds. So that's the whole graph again. We're just gonna erase some of this so we can see what's going on. And that line is popping up again. I have no idea why, sorry guys. Okay, so from A, B, C, D, and E, what is our displacement? Well, look at our final, compare it to our initial. So our initial position was at one meters, was the initial. Our final position was right here, where we said was around approximately 1.75. 1.75 meters is the initial, I mean is the final, sorry, final. So we just have to take our final minus our initial for displacement, because it's that overall change in position, and we get 0 0.75 meters. And it's positive, so it's going in the east direction, okay? So positive. All right, so message me if you have any more questions, but this is how you would solve for graph number one from practice worksheet number two. Have a great day.